Hey, this is Dr. Story. I've been a chiropractor for over 22 years. The primary method by which I first started learning chiropractic was Gonstead, and it was the greatest experience I ever had. I learned how to adjust the spine better than I ever thought I would. So with my experience, I've gained some insights by studying under a guy named Richard Gull, and in addition to that, through my own experience, I've learned some little tricks and trades to, um, to make adjusting a lot easier. And today, what I'm gonna cover is one vertebrae called the atlas. This is a very difficult adjustment to do in a safe manner. So this is mainly for all these chiropractors out there. If you're having trouble adjusting the atlas, I'm gonna show you some little tricks and trades to um, show you how to do it easier. Step one, first thing is you need to make sure that the atlas really needs to be adjusted. Most of the time, my experience has found that the atlas rarely needs to be adjusted. And the reason why is because our spine functions as one unit. So if there's curves and twists and stiffness in areas, the final place that the body tries to compensate for that is with the writing reflex where our eyes have to stay level. So you'll have people that'll have, you know, their necks will be over and out like that. But the thing is, those are all compensations to things below. Now, if you have improved the range of motion of the joints in the spine and you want to analyze the atlas, my experience has been the best way to do that is to allow two fingers and put it on the actual side of the occiput and then go down and grab the lateral side of the atlas. What you do is you sit behind the patient and because the atlas, the primary motion is rotation, that's the one of the first things you're going to try to check is rotational ability. If a person has good rotation of the atlas, chances are the anterior to posterior motions and the lateral motions are probably okay. So the thing is, the first thing I do as a screening test is I will take my fingers and place them right below the occiput on the atlas. And I will have the patient get into a neutral position. Now neutral position is actually not easy to do for some people. A lot of people have forward head posture. And the more their head goes forward, the, low, the harder it is to actually palpate that upper cervical area. So you have to bring their head back almost a little bit into extension but just about neutral. So if you can get their head in neutral, I always tell patients I want them to be like those, uh, those baseball uh, bobblehead things. So if you, if you wiggle them, their head can just move. Very neutral position. You don't want them too forward, you don't want them too back. So you get them into a neutral position, and then what you do is you simply have them rotate their head to the left, rotate it to the right and I always look down on their face and I notice where their nose goes. So if their nose only goes 35 degrees to the left, but it goes 50 degrees to the right, you know there's a restriction in the ability of the spine to move to the left. In addition to that, what I do is I use my fingers to palpate the relative tension or resistance to that motion. So if the person rotates to the left and I notice they don't move well, I'm going to use the front of my left finger on the anterior aspect of the atlas to actually see if it's got some glide in an anterior to posterior motion. I'm also at the same time with my middle finger here on the posterior part of the atlas on the right side, see if it's got resistance going that way. So usually that will tell you which way the joint is restricted. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the laterality. Now, a lot of times in school, we learned to kind of squeeze it and see where the resistance is, but I never found that to be very useful because there's a lot of anomalies of the actual position of the spine as well as a lot of anomalies of just the shape of the bone. So the best way to check the motion would be, again, to come up underneath the occiput, place your fingers on the tip of the vertebrae of the atlas, and then laterally bend them to the right and laterally bend them to the left. Now, when I first started in motion palpation studies and I first started in practice, I would actually have them bend to the side and bend to the side. And I didn't really get a lot of good results with that. What I found was if you just have them bend the upper cervical, and again, this can be five degrees of motion, just bending that upper cervical. So in other words, they're not bending like this side to side. You're just having them bend 
just the upper cervical, you'll very often pick up the side of laterality or the side that it's not restricting to to find out where to adjust them. So the key to it properly adjusting the atlas is proper analysis. Now, once you find the side that it won't laterally bend to and the side that it won't rotate you to, you would pre-position their head in order to adjust them. And so how that would look on this plastic model is if this patient was not rotating to the left and they were not bending to the left, in the Gonstead world that would be an ASLA. But the thing is, I don't think of it in static terms anymore. I think of it in motion. What motion am I trying to correct? So what I would do is I would place my thumb, squeeze the occiput together, try to get my thumb in between there. I would just laterally bend their upper cervical spine, and then their nose, I would just have a slight drop. In the old days, I used to think of trying to get that rotation out, but the more you rotate them forward, trying to correct that full rotation, the harder it is to slip and the more uncomfortable it is for the patient. So the most comfortable way to do it would be to just laterally bend, let the nose drop just a little bit. And then that, that slight bend of the nose is enough to correct that rotational move. The adjustment would be straight to the side. I would be supporting their neck. And usually what you're looking for are two audibles and they're distinct sounds. When you get one audible, you'll very often feel as though that the patient, you almost hit a wall and it didn't go through. So sometimes I will go one and then two, get both of those audibles done. Very often that corrects it. Rechecking your work, the patient likes it because they can actually feel the difference. But the main thing is you wanna make sure you're correcting these and getting a good set on the adjustment. Those are the tricks that I've learned on how to adjust the atlas, the best way to adjust the atlas. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope you can become a better chiropractor as a result of this. So if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. If you have any specific questions regarding adjusting the atlas, leave them in the comment section below and I'd be happy to try to help you. Thanks.